Christians just like marriage and they just like relationships and anything to do with marriage and relationships you will see Christians there because guess what you will be wrong a lot of times like I have had a very long struggle in my life of making not making my partner my god friends are not a replacement for a relationship neither can a relationship fill the shoes that friendships fill hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here welcome and if you're not new welcome back baby as you can tell from the title of the video we are going to be talking about dating and it's gonna be fun so sit back relax grab yourself a drink a coffee a juice pop whatever just sit down relax enjoy this video now i know a lot of you are like preparing for a godly relationship what does that even mean like these Christians are doing it a lot, blah, 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 blah. But trust me, anything worth doing is worth doing well. And I have been in a godly, Christian, Christ-centered relationship for about 14 months now. So there are little, like, I think there are a few things that I have picked up that I have seen that have been as a result of my preparation. And some of them are showing gaps. And there are some times that there I see gaps in my preparation for this part of my life, this season of my life, whatever you want to call it. So in this video, we're going to be uncovering all of that. The first thing I did to prepare to be in a godly relationship, no-brainer, prayed about it. Now, the first thing about this you need to realize is, or the first thing that I had to realize is that God is actually interested in my relationship and love life. Contrary to popular opinion, God actually cares about your relationship and he cares about your marriage. Before, I used to think that people just used to say that because it sounded nice or because they wanted to like make themselves feel good. But I have realized that it is actually true. And at first I thought it was just a Christian thing that like, Christians just like marriage and they just like relationships and anything to do with marriage and relationships, you will see Christians there. But I have now, like upon reading a lot of books, I have not realized why it is so important and why marriage is so um, intrinsic and important to God's plan because the truth of the matter is, oh my gosh, this is not a topic or a chat about marriage, but like I've actually been learning a lot about it lately. You can never pray enough. That's the truth of the matter. You can never pray enough. You can never pray enough. You can never pray too much. As much as it is a no-brainer, prayer is the place where you communicate with God. Communication is not just you saying, hey God, I want a tall, dark, handsome man. It is a place where you literally align yourself with God's will for your life. So if you're not praying, then how are you sure that you are even desiring the right things because the bible says that he will give us the desires of our hearts right and a lot of people read that as in he will give us what we ask for what is our desire but actually it's more like he will give us the desires of our hearts so he will give us the desires we should desire if that makes sense so the first thing i did was i prayed specifically that god would give me somebody that would allow me and enable me to be in a godly relationship a relationship that will honor him and all that type of stuff and apart from that i just used to pray and pray in tongues if you don't know what praying in tongues means i'll try and leave a resource down below that will help you to learn a bit more about praying in tongues but essentially praying in tongues is praying inspired by the holy spirit so that the holy spirit prays through you essentially so that you don't pray amiss and so i used to pray in tongues specifically for my relationship specifically for my marriage even before i had met my boyfriend now and i used to pray that i used to pray specific prayers such as he would be honoring to god he would love god more than he loves me he will take the work of god seriously you know he would be a leader of my future home my future marriage that type of thing so those are some some of the prayers that i would pray and i absolutely have seen them play out in my relationship right now like god even did more than i asked for if i'm being honest like i did not know i did not know what i was praying for and, and i'll get more into that as we move on the second thing is prepare to be stretched now i'm saying a lot of things that i wish i did things i did and things i wish i did so this is one of the things that i wish i did prepare to be stretched you guys I I will I, I never expected it when we're praying oh God give me this give me this we forget to pray that God will make us 
be the types of people that will be able to receive those things and i know that sounds very abstract if you're not in the situation but i'll give you more context for this now my boyfriend is a very <laughs> when i say very generous and open person if i'm being honest you guys i think he's going to become a pastor like at this rate he is a worship um leader so he does music he does worship music gospel music and he produces he like basically makes gospel music and he has ministrations and goes to different locations to minister right he is a very very generous and open person he's the type of person that would want to have people in his house all the time if he could not because he likes ne people necessarily in his space but because he's just that type of person he's extremely kind extremely friendly and what they about those types of people they always have people around them. What does that mean for you as their partner or me as his partner? It means that I have to be willing to be very tolerant of people and very tolerant of having people in my space a lot because that is what I have seen happening. Now, this is not to say don't have boundaries or that I don't have boundaries or anything like that. No, but if we think about the overarching thing of marriage, like if you are a Christian wanting to date, I don't see why you should even be trying to date without marriage in mind in the first place. And that is a whole conversation on its own. But if you are looking to get married, the point of marriage, in God's view at least, is so that you can become more like Christ. Becoming more like Christ means your patience growing. Personally, I have seen my weaknesses at this time of my life. I have seen them well. I am not patient. I am selfish. I have seen those things and those are things that I'm working on. But I did not prepare myself to be stretched. Like nothing, I don't even know if anything could have pre prepared me for what I eventually experienced. Now, I'm even talking about in the context of other people, let alone within our relationship as me and him. Like I have had to have a lot more patience. Some things that come naturally to me don't come naturally to him and vice versa. He is very patient and I have found <laughs> in these 14 months that I am not so prepare yourself to be stretched expect that God will do a work in you if it is a relationship from God that you desire expect that God will do a work in you because God loves us too much to allow us to be comfortable and to allow us to remain in mediocrity and that is one thing that I have had to learn God is not letting me have an easy walk in the park. So be prepared to be stretched. Be prepared to be stretched and be prepared to be open to learning. Be prepared to be open to being wrong a lot of times because guess what? You will be wrong a lot of times. If it is a relationship of purpose that you want, if it is a relationship that will end in marriage and not just any marriage, a healthy kingdom marriage, kingdom-centered marriage, prepare to be stretched because you will be stretched okay that thing i want to talk about it relates to being prepared become the person that is suited for the type of relationship you want so you have to work on this aspect of things because it will feel as if you are not feeling in the shoes that you are supposed to feel if you are not the type of person that is appropriate for the type of relationship that you are looking for now i've said a lot of words what i mean by that is if you are looking for a kingdom marriage if you are looking for a kingdom dating experience if you are looking for a kingdom relationship you have to be a kingdom woman or man you cannot it is it is literally not a thing where you can beat the system and what do i mean by that being a kingdom person what does that mean? Being spirit-filled, taking your relationship with God seriously, even before you meet the person. And now I'm not saying that you should take your relationship with God seriously so that you can be ready for marriage. The point is Jesus. Let's be clear on that. The point is Jesus. But if you are trying to get into a relationship with somebody that also feels as if the point of their life is Jesus, you have to be that way first. So for example, if you're trying to get into a healthy relationship, that might mean that you need to go to therapy. That might mean that you need to have conversations with your friends, hard conversations. And you guys, I will never tell you guys anything that I am not going through. Trust me, as I am like this, ask any of my close friends, they know that I am in a process of sanctification. When I say sanctification, like in the sense that my friends have told me, hey, this is wrong about you, you need to change. And I had to chest it. I had to chest it. I had to say, yep, yeah, that is me. This is wrong. I am taking it. And 
honestly i wish i had done this before i got into my relationship because that would make things a little bit smoother but even now that it's happening even as i'm in the relationship it's totally fine but be prepared prepare yourself to be that type of person and this goes for anything in life for example if you know you want a certain job you know the type of people that have that job how do they act are they dis disciplined in this area of their life do they eat this much do they eat this these things that i'm eating do they go to these places that I, i'm going to you know there is a certain way that you have to be to have certain things in your life because god is not going to allow you to have blessings that will ruin you or ruin your relationship with him like he cares more about his purpose his relationship with you than your happiness and that is the truth of the matter that is a hard pill to swallow and it's something that i had to swallow up okay so be prepared to be a different person if you need to be if the need arises and i'm not saying change your personality but i'm saying you need to come up higher you will need to come up higher and that is the truth of the matter you will need to come up higher if already you are in a place of mediocrity as i, as I gave the example earlier my, friend, my boyfriend having the calling that he has on his life i have already seen it that he is a worship leader he's a worship minister so and i feel like he also has a pastoral calling as well if i'm being completely honest so let's say he becomes a pastor and me as the kind of person i am i am not very hospitable and this is something i am working on i'm not very hospitable because i grew up in a small family i am not used to having a lot of people in my, in my space and it is definitely something i'm trying to work on and make sure that i change about myself because the truth of the matter is if i say i want to be in this godly relationship and this is the person that god has given to me mama i have to adjust immediately i have to ask god hey god please make me more patient make me more kind make me more selfless i want to be able to be this type of person that will be conducive for this relationship and ultimately fulfill god's calling for my life for my marriage and for my partner's life another thing i did was that i watched a lot of youtubers and people that had gotten its rights quote unquote um so for example um watching people that i admire their relationship asking questions that is something that i did um even though when i got into a relationship i was not actively looking for one but i knew the type of relationship that i wanted to be in and i had seen the green flags quote unquote that i was looking for and that's only because I had studied other people's relationships that's number one and number two i had resolved in my mind the type of person that i want so what this means is essentially going to god and saying i know what you want sometimes you don't know what you want granted but that's where prayer comes in going to god and asking god what should i even be looking out for in a person so that when the person comes you will know that this is what i want this is what i want this is what i want because what had happened to me is that i had been with some people in my life and then i was like okay i've seen a lot of rubbish and now i know the rubbish i do not want to see in my actual proper relationship that will actually lead, lead to marriage so having a list i know sometimes people have a list and people are a bit hesitant about that list because in, sometimes people try to limit God with their list but having a list is important because it shows that you are intentional and you are specific you know that God can do exactly what you ask not only that but you are also keeping yourself accountable to the fact that you have a standard so I would definitely say that that I didn't have I don't think I had a physical list I had some some things in my head to be honest I should have probably written it down but I had some things in, in my head that I was not compromising on. For example, I knew that I wasn't going to be with anybody that was not Christian and spirit-filled because there is a difference. I knew that I was not going to be with somebody that was that was not on the same wavelength as me in terms of my celibacy journey. I knew that I was not going to be with somebody that was not respectful to my parents or my family. I knew that I was not going to be with somebody that was not kind, that was not generous. You know, there were some things that I absolutely was not going to compromise on and that made it easier for me to spot between the people that were in my periphery who was actually going to be the person that I would be with and this is how the other point comes into into play because if somebody else is looking at you and they're like oh and they have like a list of things that they want basically are you your spec spec 
you know that's basically what i'm asking and that's what i'm trying to get at that it is important that we do if we are trying to prepare for a godly relationship next thing i would say is make sure that you have a solid relationship with god now when i say a solid relationship with god i do not mean that you have to have all your ducks in a row i do not mean that you have to um be the most spiritual person ever even though that is the goal for all of us to be honest make just make sure that you are in a bible believing church you are accountable to somebody like a pastor or somebody in your church that has been you know in the faith longer than and make sure that you are committed you are committed and you are planted in a church and i'll tell you why like i don't think that this is a prerequisite for being in a relationship but i'm just telling you guys my own experience before i met my partner now i was in a bible believing church and i was serving there i believe that that has helped me in many ways to stay accountable in my relationship with god now i'm talking about my personal relationship with god and to be in a relationship with somebody else that is also spirit filled you need to be spirit filled and you need to be committed to god because all the time you need to be keeping tabs with god because a relationship is not something that you can navigate with your own human mind at least if you're trying to fulfill your god-given calling so for example like i have seen times in my relationship where my partner and i were not seen eye to eye and the only person that could talk to me in that moment was the holy spirit and also mentors now i'll get into mentors later on because our mentors right now are in our church if we do not have a church how are we going to find people that will mentor us so being in a bible believing church and being established in your faith and in your work with god is important again you don't have to be perfect but you need to have your own personal convictions that you stand by because what will happen is that if somebody else comes with a random conviction or something that is not when i keep saying conviction i mean set of beliefs if somebody else comes with a random set of beliefs that are not aligned to what you believe but because you are not even that strong in your own self you are likely to sway back and forth and as is as a as a result of that you will have no standards in the first place so you will not even be able to say oh no this is um a no-brainer or no this is uh, something i'm not going to condone like you will not have standards in the first place and when i say standards i mean in the context of your work with god and what you are not willing to compromise on and if you're not stable don't worry there are ways to do that it is not a bad thing to desire a relationship make sure that you are not trying to get stable in your faith for the reason of a relationship because a relationship can also become a god on its own and that is what we do not want because i know there was a time in my life where i was relationships with my god let's just say that like i have had a very long struggle in my life of making not making my partner my god and not making um the relationship my god and so this is why i would say if you are able to and if you find yourself in the position spend some time working on your own relationship with god that it would become stable enough for you to get into a relationship that will not cause you to be unstable in your own relationship with god another thing that i would say i got right is i worked and walked with god to become content contentment is very important because even when you enter into a relationship if you are not content there will be a strain on your relationship now what i mean by contentment is being happy as a single person what i mean by that is enjoying your own company enjoy your own company because what happens if you're not a person that enjoys their own company or is content even in their singleness is that even when you get into the relationship you will still not be content you will be looking to fill that same hole that was open in the first place and so i know it's a very cliche thing for people in relationships to say oh single people you know be happy with yourself da, 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 da. now me saying this is absolutely in no way me trying to to um, negate the place of or the position that a relationship fills because a relationship can't there's there is something that a relationship does that singleness cannot do and that is why people desire relationships like it is not a bad thing to desire relationships and i don't want anybody to make it seem as 
it is wrong for you to desire a relationship or you should be content just as a single person and forever the rest of your life if you desire a marriage if you desire a relationship that is absolutely fine but what i am saying though is that it should not be a do or die matter like for me there was a time in my life where i was like oh i have to get married or i'm dying oh i don't think i'm going to survive without being in a relationship but i think i got to a point where i was genuinely happy like just before my own relationship started i got to a point where i was genuinely happy i genuinely was fine just you know i was nurturing my friendships which is brings me to the next point actually i was nurturing my friendships i was enjoying my time as a single person being able to do whatever i wanted whenever i wanted i just enjoyed that time of my life and that is something i would say that i did well that helped me to end to prepare myself for my relationship because now if my partner for whatever reason cannot be there or is very busy or whatever that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world for me do you get what i mean like it doesn't mean it's the end of the world like i still have my hobbies i still have the things that i am passionate about i still have for goodness sake my friends that i love so much and you know friends are not a replacement for a relationship neither can a relationship fill the shoes that friendships fill because those are very big shoes the whole point of what i'm trying to say with this contentment thing is that it is very dangerous for you to think that your partner or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your spouse will be able to fill all the roles in your life the role that god should fill the role that your friendships should fill the role that your family should fill you cannot put all of that pressure on one person hence why you need to learn contentment before you get in a relationship so that that is not a point of contention in your relationship and does not cause a strain on it the last thing i would say that you need to do when you are preparing to enter a godly relationship is you should understand the purpose of your relationship i touched on this earlier on but understanding why god created relationships in the first place really goes a long way and it was after i entered my relationship that i started to realize why god put me there in the first place the point of being in a godly relationship is so that you can look more like christ Christ is the aim, Christ is the way, Christ is the reason. Literally, Christ is the reason that we are doing all of this. Of course, it's nice to be in relationships because of the companionship, the friendship, you know, the love, everything. I don't even dispute that. The co Everything that comes with relationships is beautiful, beautiful things. But the main reason for relationships, at least Christian relationships that are leading to marriage, is to become more like Christ. Understanding that as you enter this relationship or as you prepare to enter this relationship, you will encounter discomfort that comes with sanctification. So preparing your mind for that and already engaging in sanctif sanctification before you get in a, a relationship will really help you because it will be something that is not unfamiliar. You will be already familiar with the feeling of the Holy Spirit convicting you or the Holy Spirit saying come up higher in ways that you are not necessarily hitting the mark or looking like Jesus. So understanding that you are going to, it's going to be basically a boot camp. For you to become more like Christ. That's something I didn't really do because I didn't really realize it until I entered the relationship. But it is beautiful and I am so glad that I am here because I can confidently say that this relationship has absolutely transformed my walk with God and not necessarily done a whole 180 but it has spurred me onto good works. And that is a Bible verse which I will put here. It has caused me to grow closer to God. It has caused me to be more focused. My calling, it has pushed me. It has made me better, if that makes sense. And that is the goal. That is my prayer for you guys. That if you are watching this and you are desiring a relationship, that you will enter a relationship that will cause you to grow, that will cause you to come up higher, that will cause you to um, desire more, more of God, that will cause you to desire God more, that will cause you to see that love, true love exists, you know. And that is something I, I really, really pray for every person that is desiring a relationship, um, a godly relationship. And yeah, I just want to end this video off by saying that it is absolutely possible. I never thought that I would be in this place, like this relationship. I never thought that it would be possible. I didn't even know what it looked like to be in a godly relationship until now. And I'd, this is just a testament that these things do exist and it is possible to actually honor God with your relationship in a way that is far from superficial like making the actual sacrifices like doing what you need to do even when you don't feel like it becoming more like Christ getting closer to and um, fulfilling all that God called you to fulfill 
it is possible to have that in a relationship but people always say if you fail to prepare you prepare to fail so the fact that you guys are watching this now is already preparation and being intentional knowing that growth is is not random will help us all to go a very long way in life and so yeah continue to prepare don't just watch this video read books read websites listen to more podcasts listen to more youtube videos and prayerfully consider this single season of your life make sure that you are listening for god's timing and you are discerning and creating avenues for your discernment to be sharpened such as reading the bible spending time in worship spending time in god's presence and also having good counsel around you being in a bible believing church as well i really hope that you enjoyed this video it was a bit all over the place i really apologize but also i wanted to this was really on my heart i really feel like this is something that is needed at this time so let me know if you guys have any questions if you like videos like this put down anything that you want me to make a video about next time and um any dilemmas to navigate or whatever i will try my best to answer you in the comments but i am grateful that you watch up until till this point and i will definitely catch you guys on the next one god bless you love you all very much mm.